Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. We're here at the uh, Small Cells World Summit 2015 in London's Docklands, and I'm talking with Uwe Rudenklau, who is Director of Programme Management for Radio Frequency MM Millimetric? Millimeter Wave. Millimeter Wave. Millimeter Wave. Thank you. There we are, at Infineon. So, Uwe, thanks for talking to us. Let's begin with a question about small cells in the future. They've been around for quite a while now, they've had various iterations, various adaptations and changes, but they remain basically the same technology. Mm -hmm. um, what do you expect small cell technology to look like five years down the line from now? We're in, we're in mid-2015. In the past, up until now really, in telecommunications, we've never been able to look more than about a year or a year and a half ahead because things change so quickly. Mm -hmm. Mergers, consolidation, new technologies and so on. But suddenly the industry seems to be focused globally on about five years ahead. And that's because of the emphasis on Network 2020 or 2020 Network, whatever you want to call it, combined with 5G, with the cloud, with network virtualization, SDN and so on. So what's it going to look like five years hence? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much um, to, to be invited. So Pleasure. I think uh, in five years ahead, is very important because, as you said, there is this uh, introduction of 5G or a discussion about 5G, which could be in five years, but could be also a little bit later. Yep. And uh, therefore, small cells will play an important role because the situation today with the networks is they are still sufficient, but there are other technologies uh, coming up and used in the, in the next years, which still are sufficient to uh, get the data throughputs which are discussing today, which are currently maybe 100 megabits, then going to one gigabit and looking further maybe to 10 gigabits. And to do this, the, the current network as it is with mainly macro cells will be then not sufficient to do this. So therefore, small cell will play a, a major role uh, in five years, but I guess even earlier, uh, I expect is even 2016 and 17 that there will be more rollouts uh, outdoor, indoor of the of the small cells. Okay, thank you. Um, now, let's talk about Infineon in a moment. And, and the, the focus um, is very much on um, small cell backhaul, as far as you're concerned. Can you tell us why that is? Mm -hmm. Yes, Infineon um, has several products for this high frequencies, which we call millimeter wave. Uh, these are coming from the automotive area. Uh, automotive radar, mm -hmm. which is used also in similar frequencies, and therefore we also said we develop there are also solutions as we are also an infrastructure market for high frequencies. And the reason why we are going for these high frequencies is that currently, as I said, there is sufficient throughput possible in the networks, but with the small cells coming up, you need to back this up also with the backhaul, so the connections there. And to get this high data throughputs of several gigabits, you need a lot of bandwidth and the bandwidth is only available currently in the high frequencies mm -hmm. like 60, 70, 80 gigahertz. Could be also even higher frequencies in future where we have several um, gigahertz of bandwidth as today in the lower frequencies uh, you have several megahertz. And only with this high uh, bandwidth you can support this in future. That's why we are focusing on this uh, millimeter wave solutions. Are you talking here about mass deployment under these sort of circumstances for, for sort of small cell backhaul um, or are you talking about for specialist application? Mm -hmm. Oh, we are talking at the moment for sure it's it's uh, not mass deployment of this high frequency millimeter wave but as I said as, um, as the requirements are going up in terms of throughputs as we all know the different sources what they are showing on, on uh, demand of video um, this will be then uh, mass deployments coming. The question is for sure when exactly this will yeah. happen. So uh, from our view this should happen in the next, hopefully in the next five years as a lot of companies you see also here investing into this from the small cell run side as well as from as we are doing on the back hole. Okay, now you're based in Munich. You talked about the millimeter wave lengths and so on. I've seen those in the automotive industry with BMW mm -hmm. also in, obviously in Munich. Um, those are the sort of areas you think are going to be coming up pretty quickly because I mean we're now talking the, the, the amount of communications technology and automation in a car now is mm. is astonishing so the self parking and everything else that's that's going on this is part mm. and parcel of the need for more and more backhaul capability 
Um, definitely yes, because um, that we see there currently it's mainly used for, for radar application, for security purposes in yep. the car, these yep. high frequencies. Yep. But we see there a need, and this is coming up to use car, uh, the car environment also for kind of networking environment even. They are thinking about this, um, either with the existing LTE frequencies, also in the future maybe with these millimeter wave frequencies. So to use maybe car as running networks on the street. Right. <laughs> now, if you remember back a couple of years, there was a lot of hype about the fact that small cell technology is going to be widely available absolutely everywhere in the urban mm. environment. Yes. It's not happened. Um, it's in the enterprise, it's in the home, to some extent it's in rural and remote areas. But that big push was expected and very much talked about simply hasn't happened. Why and when is it going to happen? Mm -hmm. The reason why, my explanation is when I talk with customers and operators is they said um, currently we try to expand our existing network as it is, mainly based on our macro cells. And uh, there's, as I said, different technologies also with LLA uh, and other options on the existing mm. fiber microwave. And as long as this is sufficient, uh, and it is still sufficient, they will not invest into the small cells. But there will be a point of time uh, and you can ask, I guess, many operators when this will happen. <laughs> I said, I, my guess, this is just my guess, is that this should happen in the next two years, that they will see a higher demand. And we see this already at, at Infineon, there's more interest coming on this millimeter wave um, frequencies and applications uh, for, for the small cells, besides residential and, and enterprise. So I said, my guess, this should happen in the next two years. And for sure, hopefully then further on with the implementation of 5G. Okay, thank you. Let's touch on for a moment one of the controversies in the industry, which is about what's being generically called LTEU, uh, or LAA, as you just mentioned in standards talk. Um, that's LTE across the public spectrum. How do you think LTE should be viewed? And the reason I'm asking you this is, mm -hmm. is because there are two very distinct schools of thought. One is the critics, the cynics, some might say, mm -hmm. say this is a typical big telco effort to uh, put a hammerlock on competition uh, in unlicensed spectrum and they're going to hang on to it for as long as they can and milk what they can out of it. Mm -hmm. The other side says, well, you can understand we have an interest in this, the big operators, but you shouldn't think they're all bad all the time. Um, and in the end, uh, LAA or LTEU is mm -hmm. going to be a user-friendly method for aggregating data to provide a better service to users. Mm -hmm. Which camp do you sit in? Are you there? Are you there? Are you on the fence? Mm -hmm. um, as Infinity, we are not that much involved directly in this uh, technology, uh, as we are not directly working on it. Um, but anyhow, if I look uh, as a simple example, even with my family and children, uh, when they are getting, we just recently went to holidays, and what the first thing that they're asking, where's the Wi-Fi network? Yeah. How can I connect to this with yeah. my devices, whatever yeah. they have? Yeah. Uh, therefore, I think um, the operators realize that Wi-Fi is an important thing, where they can't, where the, where the people don't use, uh, let's say, the LTE, 2G, 3G, and it's mostly free of charge in most of the areas, hotels, hotspots. So therefore, I think um, it, is, it plays an important role and the operators recognize that they should implement this also into their networks in a certain way. If this is free of charge then or not, uh, this is another discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, I would say, yes, it's necessary because it helps also, as I said before, for the higher data throughputs and a um, lot of people using Wi-Fi. So why not implement this also into the uh, LLA as, as another option for unlicensed then? But there will be a certain limit because the same happened many years ago at 2.4 gigahertz and this band is now overcrowded and yeah, you see much. wherever you are yeah, yeah. you could have problems to get your yeah. connections and the same will happen with five gigahertz so this band which they're currently discussing also in the if you provide many it years. if you provide it they will fill it yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay we, we touched very briefly on 5g i'd like to bring, bring the interview to, a, to an end with this yep. question how important is small cell and small cell technology going to be in 5G? If 5G is going to be ubiquitous and absolutely everywhere as it's promised to be. Um, let's say that way, so 5G, I'm also working in a new Etsy group, which is looking into millimeter wave uh, applications also for, for 5G as towards 2020 or beyond. Yep. And as said before, I think uh, small cell will be important for 5G. 
because there are different options and, and targets what 5G will be. And I uh, just recently read there's not an agreement what to agree on what 5G is. <laughs> That's a funny thing. Um, yeah. um, therefore, for my opinion, small cells, however you, you define them from, from very small distances, femto up to uh, micro, uh, will be needed for, for 5G. For sure, the topology and the technology also from semiconductor point of view will look different than you have today for small cells course you have their uh, different possibilities to connect with each other and there are different use cases that from IOT to what we are doing today traditionally more on the backhaul and therefore there will be different solutions but from my point of view small cell will be their very important role from very short distances up to a few hundred meters uh, on street level what we are discussing there currently also um, so yes it is from my point of view a must have Okay, Uwe Rudinklaar, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Elsa. Thank you very much.